This is Raid One with PocketNow.com with a video review of Makayama's Touch Browser. This is a new web browser that was announced a couple of weeks ago and is available for use on Windows Mobile 2003, 5, and 6 touchscreen devices. Unfortunately, it's not available for non touchscreen devices, so Windows Mobile 5 smartphone and Windows Mobile 6 standard edition devices are excluded from this application. Today I'm going to give you an overview of how this application works and I have it installed currently on my AT&T Tilt and I'm running on AT&T's 3G network. So let's get started. I'm going to start the application here. And it starts up. And right now it's going to bring us, I believe, to MSN's website, which it has. And you'll notice it brings you to this full screen view. Uh, first thing I noticed was kind of annoying on this full screen view is there's no indication of how to get to the icons. And as you notice, the other thing I didn't like was on the right or on the bottom, there's no scroll bars. So I have no idea how far down I am on the web page. You know, all I have to do is, you know, I could just flick and scroll on this but I have no idea where the bottom of the page is and I have no idea where I was at any point in time on the web page so that's uh, my first major inconvenience I found on this application after going to Makayama's website to figure out how to use this I clicked on the up uh, d-pad key and that brings us to these six icons the first icon is the back key the second icon is a question mark which you would think would be the help manual but it's not. It actually brings you to Google uh, to do any searches on the internet. So I think that's another second major inconvenience there. You would think that it's a, a manual, but it's not. It's actually a search engine. The third icon is the URL, URL or the address bar where you can just type in what web pages you want to visit. The fourth icon is a close button, but in order to close the application you have to double tap on it as opposed to the single tap that you're used to. I assume this is uh, set up this way just to avoid any accidental closure of the application. The fifth icon there is just the user settings and the sixth icon is a toggle to switch between desktop version and mobile version of any web pages. So if a web page that you're visiting has a mobile version you just click on that and it will make it easier for you to navigate. So let's go through these icons uh, first we'll go through the search engine here brings up this haphazardly arranged soft uh, keyboard here at the top you'll notice that it's got the vowels A, E, I, O, and U and then just below the next four rows are the consonants but in you know again no real uh, arrangement that I'm uh, aware of and then the last two rows are the numbers you know 0 through 9 across the side we have the the, the the delete key, a period, the slash, I'm assuming that's a space key, the dot com for quick uh, typing, and an enter button. So if we use this, and let's search up pocketnow.com, again, I'm kind of struggling to find where each of the letters are. We click on enter. It's going to bring us to Google and it did, a, it did find you know, thousands of of uh, matches on Pocket Now, and if we click on the hyperlink there, it will bring us to Pocket Now's website. And again, you know, here we are on Pocket Now, and you'll notice again there's just no scroll bar, so I have no idea where I am on the web page. Real inconvenient. If I click on back for a second, you can actually use your D-pad, the left key here on your device and it'll bring you back. Uh, let's see here. If I click on the search search box here, I don't get my soft input panel that I would normally get on my uh, on my touch on my AT and T tilt. You know, I have I'm using Kutex TouchPal and I would usually use that to type things in and it's not showing up. So the only way I can actually type on this is looks like if I just take it off of this cradle here. I have to use my hardware keyboard to type. So users of devices that don't have these hardware keyboards would find it really inconvenient to use. The only way they could get back to searching is clicking on the question mark here. And it 
looks like I've uh, discovered a, a bug here. It doesn't want to get out of this. It's, there we go. It didn't reset the the soft keyboard back to this uh, original original view. So I'm just click enter. Oops. The next is just the URL key again. It just brings you back to this. So if I type pocket now again. We have a dot com button here. It'll bring us back to Pocket Now's website. Again, just really slow to use, I find. We're going to go, the next icon we can go through is the settings here. So here you can just adjust the settings on the device. The first is what home page you want it to go to by default. It's set for Makayama, but as you saw, it went to MSN, so I'm not understanding why that happened. The next thing you can change is just how long you want the controls to show up on the screen, between 1 and 10 seconds. You can also change the keyboard layout from vowels on top, which we saw before, to alphabetic. And then at the bottom, we just have uh, access to here, the help manual, which again, you would think would be on the question mark, but it's actually in the settings. And it brings you to Makayama's website and shows you how to use the, uh, the application. Going back, here's an about button. It just shows you that it's touch browser. It doesn't really show you the version numbers. And then we just have the cancel and the save button. So we'll just save that and use the alphabetic keyboard. And then the last thing you'll see is the toggle button. So if we toggle back and forth, there really wasn't any change here on this, on this web page. So let's see if we try another web page. Let's try let's try Yahoo's website. There we go. It's navigating. And as you notice, every screen tap creates that loud, annoying beeping noise. And unfortunately, in the settings, I didn't see any way to turn it off. So, when you're using this, if, if you're using this browser, just make sure you turn the volume down on your device, otherwise you're just going to hear a beep every time you use it, which is, after a while, can get pretty annoying. So here we are in Yahoo, and it just brings us to the mobile version, so it doesn't look like it really navigates to a full version of the website. So that's really, again, just another major inconvenience if I click on this. Actually, I was on mobile view, I apologize. I switch to the desktop view, let's see if that does anything. And it really didn't. So yeah, it doesn't matter. It just recognizes that you're on a mobile device, and so it's just going to default to the to the mobile view of it. So you know, at first glance, this browser looked like it was promising. It it it, it promised uh, full screen iPhone type views like Saf the iPhone Safari, but after going through it, there's just a lot of just major nuisances. Again, the lack of the scroll bars, the inability to use your soft input panel when you're using these search fields here and that annoying beep and the keyboard itself you know, I find it just hard to recommend using this application you can if you want to try it you can get it on Makayama's website which is www.makayama.com and if you decide to purchase it it's available for sale for $14.95 so this has been Ray Duan with PocketNow.com and a video review of Makayama's Touch Browser